Hello, listeners. Welcome back to my podcast. I'm Luke. I'm an English teacher and a comedian, and I am here to help you with your English. It's new episode time. Here we go. It's coming hot on the heels of the last one. This episode is called "Rambling Through the Streets of Paris by Night on a Bike" with a very special guest. And there's a question mark at the end, which is why I said it like that. Rambling through the streets of Paris at night on a bike with a very special guest, and I hope that the title really arouses your interest. First, there's the whole rambling through the streets of Paris bit, which obviously sounds fascinating, doesn't it? Because you're thinking, "Ah,、oh, this is a rambling episode and an outdoor one too." But then. At night, ooh, nighttime in Paris. The romance, the atmosphere, the sounds of clinking glasses, and lovers wooing each other on restaurant terraces, and then on a bike, which surely will make you think, "Wow, Luke is podcasting on a bike!" My goodness, this is a groundbreaking moment for this podcast after nearly eight hundred episodes. And then there's the with a very special guest bit. The question mark at the end hopefully leaves a sense of unresolved tension and intrigue, which can only be relieved by listening to the entire episode from start to finish. More on that in a moment. I'm not actually teaching you any specific language in this episode. No specific language instruction. Instead, this is just one of those episodes in which I just talk to you and put my thoughts into words in order to give you some more English listening practice. I hope you enjoy it. And that we can go on a little journey together. So, just a bit of podcast admin before we continue. I just need to say something about the Luke's English podcast app. I'll keep this short and sweet. So, a bit of pod,、uh, podcast admin about the Luke's English podcast app. Okay. So, if you have the LEP app on your phone, you've probably noticed that new episodes are not arriving there and have not arrived there since June this year, 2022. That's when I moved to the new host, Acast. I keep talking about it. You, I've probably bored the pants off you with all this stuff, but still, I'm just sweeping up the last bits of admin, leftover admin here. So、um, the previous host that I was with before, Libsyn, they manage the Luke's English podcast app. So to get straight to the point, I think the LEP app is not going to continue. I know it's sad. We can all shed a tear and perhaps raise a glass in tribute to the Luke's English podcast app. It's been good. We've had wonderful times, good memories. We'll we'll raise a glass. We'll shed a tear, and then we will move on and look to the future. Now, most of you at this point, to be honest, are thinking, "Huh, what? What Luke's English podcast app? I listen using Apple Podcasts or Spotify or something." If that's you, then yeah, don't worry about it. The thing is, I have an app in the App Store. It's been there since 2018, and quite a lot of people have downloaded it on their phones. And for them, that is where Luke's English Podcast lives. Okay, that's where Luke's English Podcast lives in that app on their phones, and also Luke's English Podcast Premium. That's where some people go or think they should go in order to get my content. But no, the app is defunct now. It's no longer working. It's no longer functioning. So the LEP app will not continue. It's still available for the time being, but new episodes will no longer arrive there. And this is also true for LEP Premium in the LEP app. No LEP Premium in the LEP app now. Okay. Also, it seems that some people have sort of misunderstood how it works. Some people have been signing up to Luke's English Podcast Premium on Acast Plus. And then trying to use those Acast login details to sign into the LEP app without success, and then maybe banging their head against the wall in frustration. But I'm sorry, that doesn't work, folks.、Uh, there's no connection between Acast and the Luke's English Podcast app. So trying to sign into the app with your Acast details won't work.、Uh, and there is another, perhaps more convenient way to get premium content. In the same place you get normal episodes. I mean, in a normal podcast app like Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, and so on. When you sign up to LEP Premium, and we've nearly finished this bit, okay? This bit of admin is nearly done. I promise. When you sign up to LEP Premium on Acast Plus, and by the way, this isn't a call to action. This is not a promo. This is just useful information. 
Okay, when you sign up, you can add the premium episodes to any normal podcast app on your smartphone. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, CastBox, Overcast. If it's got the word cast in it, then it, you're probably okay. But not Spotify, because it's not Spotify's not a normal podcast app, you see. So anyway, with a few clicks, you can just add the entire premium archive to your episode list in one of those podcast apps. And then just listen to everything there and get access to the PDFs and video links for premium stuff too. Okay, so there you go. Just normal podcast apps, yes. LEP app, um, no more, sorry. Okay, so don't use it anymore. And you can just delete the LEP app now if you like. Don't worry, I won't be sad. Okay, it's okay. And if you are still confused, you can find more information on, my, on uh, mm, mm, mm. you can find more information on my website. There's a page there which explains how to add LEP Premium to a normal podcast app on your phone. Okay, right. So that's all I wanted to say. Now I will let you discover this new episode, and here we go. You're listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk. Hello listeners, welcome to this episode of Luke's English Podcast where I'm on my feet, another one. What shall I call these, walk and talk? The thing is though, as you might be able to hear, I also have my bike. Click, there goes the door. As I open it, this is going to be tricky to manage to get this bike out of the door. crash bang wallop and here we are we're outside so yes I've got my bike I'm out in the street people are looking at me because I'm talking into a microphone and thinking what is he a reporter what's he reporting the fact that he's got a bike well yes that's right this time yes so here I am doing a podcast in the street again so Walk and talk, as I call it sometimes, or in this case, walk and cycle. No, that, does that make sense? Can you walk and cycle at the same time? I don't think so. So I should have said <laughs> cycle and talk or talk and cycle or walk and talk and walk and you get the idea. Podcasting in the street, you'll be able to hear sounds around me as usual. I hope that uh, I'm going to be able to actually do this properly. So I'm walking with my bike in the street. It's it's uh, after dark. The sun has gone down. It's about 8 p.m. in October here. Um, weather's fairly nice for this time of year. Not raining. We had a beautiful sunset earlier on. Ow! As I whack my shin against the pedal of the bike. You know the way that always happens with bikes. Those pedals, oh, they're useful for making the bike go forwards but you're always whacking your shins on them aren't you i am anyway now so what am i doing obviously walking down the street here with some remnants of the beautiful sunset in the sky up ahead of me beautiful orange peach colors salmon colors and blue light blue beautiful uh, paris sunset over there in the distance and I'm walking here, pushing my bike along, trying not to crash into people. There are like metal panels on the floor. They've had roadworks. No, they've been doing roadworks, and so there are these metal panels that are covering up holes in the ground. That's what you could hear. And I'm just walking along, podcasting. It, you can't see it, but, you know, there are lots of people around. There's people... Uh, sitting at tables outside cafes and restaurants people just walking past me you might be able to hear the beautiful sounds of French being spoken around me people going oh, putain. beautiful sounds of uh, the streets of Paris after dark as I attempt to cross the road while uh, not dying if possible that would be a pity, wouldn't it, listeners? It can be a bit dangerous walking across the street here in Paris. The drivers are a bit crazy. The cyclists everywhere, scooter riders. 
let me tell you what this is all about. So this evening, ow, I hit my leg against the pedal again. This evening, I am going to the Pan Am Art Cafe to see a comedy show. I've got an evening off. I'm out this evening, letting uh, my wife put our daughter to bed. And uh, I'm out this evening to go to the Pan Am Art Cafe, which is a little stand-up comedy venue in the 11th arrondissement of Paris, I think. And I thought that I would bring my microphone and do a bit of on-the-spot podcasting while I'm doing it. Now, I should be meeting up with Sarah Donnelly and Amber Minogue and maybe some other people, I don't know, this evening. And the thing is, right, that tonight at the Pan Am, I have... I've been told, or at least it has been rumoured, that there will be one special guest, one very special guest. In fact, two rather special guests at the show this evening, at the venue, at the cafe, at the, at the comedy club. Hold on. Merci. Okay, some editing, some editing there would have been necessary because as I was talking to you, I got to the door to the building where my office is located. And then I struggled with my bike to try and get the bike through the door. It's difficult here in, in Paris. You've got these big doors, big heavy doors that automatically close. And uh, often there's a big step that you have to step over. And uh, it's difficult to lift a heavy e-bike over that step and record an award-winning podcast at the same time. So I struggled, and several Parisians awkwardly offered to help me, and I just did my standard, ah, merci, merci, merci. Normally works okay. So anyway, I'm now climbing the many, many stairs to get up to my office here. And no doubt you will hear me getting out of breath live on the podcast. <sighs> let's, let's hear how Luke's cardiovascular system handles all of those stairs. I'm doing okay, I think. All right, so here we are at my office. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, Luke. You're calling it an office. Well, yeah. Maybe uh, I was calling it an office. Sometimes it's an office. Sometimes it's a pod room. Some kind, sometimes it's a pod cupboard. Many names. Basically, this is my room where I record ah, my episodes. Let me get my breath back. Whew. Ah, Breathe and relax. Okay, I just, just climb over 100 steps there. Um, right, so why am I here? You're thinking to yourself, Luke, which is a strange thing to think to yourself. Luke, I thought you were going to the uh, comedy show, but you're in the pod room. What's going on? Yeah, to be honest, I've come here because I needed to get a little microphone, a special little microphone, which I could clip to my jacket so that I can uh, podcast without without any hands. Does that make sense? No one's going to remove my hands today, hopefully. But I'm going to need my hands, both of them, for riding the bike. And I was thinking, hmm, maybe I can podcast while I'm riding. But of course I need that little microphone. But where is it? This is the question. Ah ha ha, there it is. Well, it should be in this little pack. Fascinating stuff here. As Luke searches for a little microphone. Okay, let me put the microphone on the table. Still recording? Still recording. Okay. So, what was I saying? That's right, I'm going to the Pan Am Art Cafe. It's a, um, it's a famous little 
stand-up comedy venue, a place where you go and see comedy shows. Long-term listeners might remember me mentioning this place before on the podcast. I have talked about it uh, a few times in the past. I've talked about the Pan Am Art Cafe before because I used to do stand-up comedy shows there myself back in the day including the show I used to do with Paul Taylor, which was called Sorry, We're English, if you remember me mentioning that. That was many years ago, in 2015. Um, So anyway, going down there, yes, there's a comedy show, and yes, apparently there will be a couple of special guests, one special guest in particular. So it's it's meant to be a secret this evening, but I can tell you now, can't I, because this is... Obviously, this is going to be published later. Let me just get the microphone set up. I'm going to clip it to myself. So apparently Jerry Seinfeld is going to be at the show tonight. Do you know who Jerry Seinfeld is? Some of you are going, yeah, of course we do, Luke. Who do you think we are? And then other people are like, who? Jerry what? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, let me plug the microphone in, and here we go. Ping. One, two. The external microphone has been uh, plugged in, and there we go. You should be able to hear me quite clearly now. You were thinking, we we could hear you clearly before, Luke. Okay, good. But now you'll be able to hear me without having to hold the recorder to my mouth. And now you're thinking, okay, this is all great, Luke. Now get to the point and get to the comedy venue. Right, so every now and then, Jerry Seinfeld comes to Paris because, you know, he likes it, because it's all pretty and beautiful and all the rest of it. And also, he's good friends with a very famous French comedian called Gad Elmaleh. French speakers, you might know who that is, you probably do. So uh, Jerry and Gad are good friends. And so when Jerry comes to Paris, he sometimes performs comedy with Gad. They come down to the local comedy club or whatever, and, um, you know, they do a little little performance. Normally, it'll be Gad will come up and do his comedy, and Jerry will come up and do his comedy, and the, the audience, of course, will normally go, wow, I can't believe it. It's Gad Elmaleh, and it's Jerry Seinfeld. This is amazing. And everyone has a wonderful time, and Jerry gets to do comedy, which he obviously loves to do. He gets to enjoy being received as a special guest. He gets to go back to New York and tell everyone that uh, he performed stand-up in Paris, and then everyone thinks he's very sophisticated. And we get to see Jerry Seinfeld perform stand-up comedy in a very small place. I mean, the room holds about 60 people. Very small little place. And you know what? There is a small chance, just a small chance that we will get that we'll get to meet him it's a very small chance because sarah knows gad and i know sarah and and gad knows jerry so who knows i might get to meet jerry and then i'll be able to say yeah jerry knows luke luke knows jerry they're good friends it's very unlikely to be honest that this is going to happen and if i do get to meet jerry i think there's almost no chance that we will become friends because I'm sure that Jerry has got plenty of other things to be doing with his time. And at this point you're thinking, you're too modest, Luke. You're being too modest. Maybe I am. Maybe I am. But I think at this stage in Jerry's career, I'm not sure he's looking for a podcaster like me. So I think there's probably little chance of us becoming great mates. Anyway, what am I saying? I mean, you know, I shouldn't really say that, should I? Who knows? Maybe he's going to say, oh, you're Luke from Luke's English Podcast. I've always wanted to meet you. Who knows? Uh, So this is a bit of a coincidence because I was talking about Jerry Seinfeld with Amber and Paul on the podcast only recently in episode 791. Some of you will have heard that. As As I unlock my bike... Let's see if I can podcast while cycling. It's, it's an e-bike. They have this scheme here in Paris where you can uh, rent an e-bike from the local transport company, the RATP. Is it the RATP? I think it is. Or is it 
is it the city hall or something, Mairie de Paris? I'm not sure. Anyway, you can rent um, e-bikes at a discounted price, which is quite good. It's part of their scheme to encourage people to use bikes a lot more in the city to try and, you know, make the place less polluted. That's why I've got one, and it's fantastic. But the, the subscription is only for six months. You're only allowed to rent these ones for six months. Um, so next month, that's it. No more e-bike. Will I buy one? I don't know. They're very expensive, aren't they? I might just have to go back to using public transport again. We will see. Anyway, where am I going? Pan Am. I'm entering this into my phone. Pan Am Art Cafe. There we go. City Mapper, the app I use, is hopefully going to give me the best route to get to the comedy venue. I want the quiet, the quietest route because I'm not really in a rush. And let's go. Okay. So for the very first time, I think, on Luke's English podcast, I'm going to be podcasting while cycling, podcasting on a bike. I have podcasted in a in a car. I've podcasted in a taxi. I have podcasted in a plane. I've podcasted in a toilet in a plane. I've podcasted on a train. I've podcasted in a toilet on a train. Uh, have I ever podcasted on a boat? Yes, of course I have. I did an episode which was called On a Boat. So I have definitely podcasted on a boat. Okay, let's get this bike out of, out through the door. Get the bike through the door. There we go. Okay. Okay, now time to start cycling. Obviously, I'm going to need to be very careful. Don't worry, I will take every precaution, listeners. And let's get going. So we are now en route, in transit, heading for the Pan Am Art Cafe to see this Jerry Seinfeld and Gad El Malay show. Will they be funny? Will we get to meet them? We will see. Will this be a total anticlimax? I know I'm adding a bit of drama to the episode here with the uh, possibility or potential of meeting Jerry Seinfeld. And you're thinking, this is fantastic, Luke. Are we going to actually get Jerry on the podcast? Who knows? Maybe I'm going to get your expectations all the way up. And then... And then I won't get to meet him. There's a very good chance that I won't meet him, listeners, okay? A very, very, very high chance that I'm not going to get to meet him. You know what? I feel so self-conscious doing this, cycling while talking, that I'm going to put some headphones in my ears, not so I can monitor the sound, but so it looks like I'm speaking on the telephone, right? If you want to, if you don't want people to think that you're a crazy person who likes to talk to himself, you know, if you are a crazy person who likes to talk to yourself, or you're a podcaster and you don't want people to think that you're a crazy person who likes to talk to themselves or themselves, then uh, stick some headphones in and people will think that you're just on a hands-free call. Little tip there for the mentally ill and the podcasting community. Um, Just always wear headphones and then people just think that you've got a really active social life and you've got lots of friends (laughs) that you have to multitask because you've got so many friends that you have to just be talking to them while you're doing other things. Either that or they'll be like, oh, there's a podcaster pretending to talk on the telephone. I'm not sure. Obviously, they'll be thinking that in French. Okay, let's get going, shall we? All right, we are on the move again. I'm going to try to follow the directions on, in my app here. The app, by the way, my phone is attached to the front of my bike. It's attached to the handlebars. Handlebars. So I'm able to look at the look at the map while I'm cycling. Uh, so don't worry, I'm not cycling with a phone in my hand or something like that. Now there might be wind. I've just realised as I cycle there might be wind. I'm sure there's wind. There must be. Right, because I'm sure that there is wind. 
I guess it means that I can't say anything profound while I'm moving because potentially I'll have to cut it out of the episode because it'll all sound like this. It won't sound like that. So I'm just not going to say anything while I'm moving. And then when I stop like this at traffic lights, then I can give my profound insights on the human condition on a bicycle. Okay. Maybe when I'm moving slowly, it's not so bad. But now, now I think it's too noisy, right? So I'm going to just shut up for a while and I'll edit these bits out. Okay. So of course there was no wind and you can't hear any wind or sort of air disturbance uh, on the recording. But I didn't know that at the time. I could have just carried on rambling on while cycling, but I didn't know that at the time. But it doesn't matter. Let's just carry on now with this extremely exciting, nail-biting episode of Luke's English Podcast. Am I going to meet Jerry Seinfeld? Am I going to get Jerry Seinfeld on Luke's English Podcast? Will I be able to say that Jerry, the, the world-famous comedian Jerry Seinfeld was on Luke's English Podcast? Do any of you even know who Jerry Seinfeld is? Does it all matter at all in the grand scheme of world history and the story of human civilization on earth not really but it's still exciting isn't it listeners let's carry on on my bicycle journey don't worry i didn't crash now let's continue okay so i'm now cruising through the streets of the ninth arrondissement after having edited out a bit of uh a bit of stuff here oh okay it's noisy again Oh, driver, what are you doing? The driver ahead of me is doing some crazy driving. Just typical for Paris. He's going right and then he's immediately going left, like changing his mind halfway through, not bothering to look if someone's coming up behind him, just swinging left. Right, so I've stopped at traffic lights. As I was saying, I'm now in the 9th arrondissement. Very cool area. Lots of little streets with uh, tall terraces of Hausmanian buildings on either side, theatres, lots of bars and quite cool, hip-looking people strolling around. And I'm, I'm heading for the République area of Paris. That's where the comedy venue is to be found. I have to say, this is one of my favourite things to do in Paris is in the evening or at night to travel through the little streets, finding my way to a comedy show, maybe because I'm going to perform or I'm going to watch some people performing. By the way, the show will be in English, in case you're wondering. The show's going to be in English. Uh, I don't think that Jerry speaks any French. And there are comedy shows in English in this city, like the ones that I do sometimes. Uh, so it is possible to see shows in English and normally the audience will will be up for that, you know. It depends on who's in the audience, but normally there are enough tourists here and enough uh, expats, English-speaking expats who live in Paris to to make a show work. And of course there's French people who speak good English and they want to see comedy in English as well. So that's how that works. But this is one of my favourite things, just travelling through the streets after dark, having a look around. Enjoying the atmosphere. I'm now riding past a music venue called New Morning. And this street always smells of of weeds. There's always people smoking weed outside that place. It's like, <coughs> oh. As a pedestrian just steps out right in front of me without looking. Okay, making my way across Rue Faubourg Saint-Denis, which is a great place to get a bite to eat, listeners, if you're ever in the area. Faubourg Saint-Denis in the evening. It's quite a hip area. Good place to get like a kebab, like a, but a really good kebab, not like an English kebab. I 
don't know if this is too noisy or not because of the wind or the air, you know, as I cycle, but I'm now in the 10th hour on D small. It's exciting, this, isn't it? The way the numbers keep changing. Oh, 10th hour on D small now, heading for the, guess what? 11th hour on D small. See the way the numbers work? Nine, 10, 11. Even in Paris, numbers go in the same direction. And I'm just cruising slowly here. I've got to keep my wits about me. I've got to keep my eyes peeled because there's always some crazy person who decides to just step into the road without looking because they're like, bah, je suis Parisien. I am Parisian and I walk into the streets without looking. Uh, this is my right. Every Parisian has the right to do what the f they want at all times. Even if, it, even if they don't have the right to do it, they still have the right to do it. That's kind of the attitude sometimes. And here we are approaching the Place de la République. This is the place where people love to demonstrate to protect their human rights as a man just walks straight down the street in front of my bike and then I think he muttered a, a, an insult at me under his breath when he had to get out of my way. Welcome to Paris everybody. So Place, Place de la République when there are demonstrations when people are protesting things they often will congregate here and they sing and chant and so on and why not it's a big open place lots of cars going around lots of lights everywhere the city of lights they call it that's right not the city of love people often call it that but that's not the actual nickname it's known here as the city of light for lots of different reasons. If I see Amber, I'll ask her why it's called the City of Light. I mean, I'm sure it's because it's got lots of pretty lights everywhere, especially in the evening like this, on a nice October evening, the lights look lovely. But maybe it's something else, maybe like the City of Light, meaning like the city of, you know, rational thinking, the city of reason. I wonder if that's something to do with it as well, you know? Um, or maybe not, maybe it's just because they've got lice, not lots of nice, pretty lights. I don't think they've got lice. Um, not, not these days, not so much. Okay, as I now cruise down, what street is this? Rue Faubourg du Temple, in the direction of the comedy show. A dead pigeon on the floor. Squashed. <laughs> did you need to know that? Of course you didn't need to know it. But there you go, reportage listeners reportage as it happens reporting all the things i see bars cafes on either side places to buy cigarettes and tobacco in some ways paris has not changed in decades and decades more or less the same kind of thing that was here probably 50 years ago cafes bars people drinking coffee at the bar People having a glass of wine, a little glass of beer, talking, talking, talking. Places that sell tobacco and cigarettes. Still doing a roaring trade here. Okay, I'm about to cross the canal. There's a bridge, don't worry. As I cycle across. And then we're gonna cross over this junction. This is the area that uh, was attacked in 2000 and when gosh I don't remember now when there were terrorist attacks here it was in this exact spot that one of the gunmen came here shocking opened fire on people sitting in the cafes and terraces anyway never mind that now tonight is a night of comedy and laughter now it would be good, wouldn't it, listeners, if I could get Jerry Seinfeld on Luke's English podcast. But as I said, I'm not holding my breath, okay? So you know, I can't guarantee it, so don't expect it too much. There's a good chance it's not going to happen. But at the very least, I'll get Amber Minogue and Sarah Donnelly on the show, and maybe one or two other people who pop up. We will see who, we'll see who we get. Uh, but if I can't actually 
speak directly to Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, if I can't speak to him directly, maybe I'll sneakily manage to record some of the show. <laughs> now that's not really fair. But um, as I said, reportage. Just, you know, reporting on my live experience. I'm not going to upload the, uh, Jerry Seinfeld's entire performance, but I might share a little clip just to, you know, bring you into the whole experience here. I'm trying to find a place to park my bike. There aren't any places. But I might surreptitiously, meaning kind of secretly without anyone noticing, I might surreptitiously record some of Jerry's performance if I can get away with it. If I'm sitting on the front row and he can see me, if I'm sitting right in front of him, obviously I won't be doing it because it will be blatant. But if, you know, if I can get away with it, I might get the recorder out and just quickly, subtly switch it on. Did I hear someone say Luke? Or is it my imagination? Or just my ego? I think I'm going to park my bike here. Is this wise? There's a lamp post. I'm going to attach my bike to the lamp post. Wish me luck. I hope it's still here when I get back. And that means the bike and the lamp post, especially the bike. But you know, if the lamp post is gone, then I expect the bike would be gone as well, right? I hope this is a safe spot to keep this. It's a bit of a dodgy area, but I don't think anyone's gonna like pull down a lamppost just to steal this bike, but we will see. Okay, so I'm standing outside the Pan Am. I think it's gonna be time to stop recording. You know what, actually I will walk in with the microphone switched on and uh, we'll see how much battery do I have left. Oh my God, I've got almost no battery. Right, I'm gonna to go to the shop to get batteries. Before I go into the Pan Am, I need to get more batteries. I hope that shop is open. Because there is absolutely nothing worse than running out of batteries when you really need them. And it does remind me of that time in San Francisco when I was interviewing AJ Hogue and I lost about half an hour of really good stuff with him because the battery ran out on my recorder. And that's not gonna happen again, folks. Okay, I need... Bonjour. Uh, Est-ce que je peux avoir des piles euh, triple A, s'il vous plaît? Triple A, oui. Oui, c'est bon, merci. Merci. Bon soirée. You know what, listeners? Did you notice that? I said bon... Did I say... Did I say bonjour to him? I did, didn't I? I said bonjour to him and it's flipping 8.30 in the evening. What was I thinking? But to be fair, he said bonjour to me too, so I think we're both okay. If you both get it wrong, it's all right. If one of you gets it wrong, then you feel like an absolute muppet. But I did, he said bonjour first, so I said bonjour, just, to, just so he didn't feel bad. So I'm gonna walk into the Pan Am with the microphone on, but I'm probably not gonna talk because people will think that's weird. And we'll see if I see anyone I know. Maybe I won't see anyone I know, and I'm gonna feel like a, a weirdo because I'll just walk in on my own and I won't know anyone. But I, we'll see. Anyway, time to go in. All right. From there? Yeah, you've got to get a ticket. Okay. Hello. Hi, where's my husband? Don't know. Okay, well, you and Amber stay the soccer. Okay. Okay, listeners, so I hope you're enjoying this bicycle adventure into Paris. So let me kind of pick up what happened next. So I went in. 
I went into the venue. I picked up my ticket at the door, which had been left there very kindly by Sarah Donnelly. And I went in and I met up with Amber, the famous Amber, Amber Minogue with the beautiful voice. I met up with her and a bunch of other comedians who you might have heard on this podcast before, including Fred Iango, who was on the show recently. Also, Alexander Van Walsam from episode 391. Remember that? Of course you do. And also Elspeth Gratty from episode 684, which again, of course you remember. Not to mention Robert Hain from episodes 143 and 395. Uh, who could forget, and probably some others as well, some other people who were queuing up to go into the room for the performance. Sarah was getting ready backstage, getting herself ready to go on stage and perform as part of the show. Also, Sebastian Marx was there doing the same thing. You remember Sebastian Marx, of course, from episodes 130, 247, 298, 299, 388, 389 and 665. He was there too. I know you're excited about all of these special guests who actually you won't hear on the podcast, I think, this time, but you can go back and listen to their dedicated episodes. All these people were there, uh, Sebastian and Sarah being the ones who were due to go on stage as part of the show. So the comedy room at the Pan Am is downstairs in the basement. It's a room where I have performed comedy myself many, many times before, so it's very familiar to me. In fact, this is the room where I once told a certain joke on stage, which then went on to become some sort of legend on this podcast. I think you know the one I mean. The Pan Am is a small room. It seats about 60 people, probably, and everyone is packed in quite close together on benches. The place has tiles on the walls, and it looks a bit like a metro station. That's the kind of style that they've gone for. The ceiling is fairly low. And it's made of concrete. Most of the walls and ceiling and stuff are all concrete. And there are lots of flat, hard surfaces, which is very good for comedy. It's a good comedy room because the laughter bounces around the room, which is what you want from a stand-up comedy venue. You want the laughter to bounce around because when the audience can hear the laughter, then they feel more comfortable and more willing to laugh too. You see, so it's a good room for doing comedy. The stage is very small. It's about three metres wide by about two metres deep, if you get that, if you can picture that. The audience kind of go, surrounds the stage, not completely, not 360 degrees, but about 180 degrees. You can, you, this, the, the, the audience goes around the stage in that way. And then there's the wall at the back of the stage. Um, so very small stage, Amber, Alex and I sat on the second row, just a couple of meters in front of the stage where hopefully Jerry Seinfeld himself was due to stand and make us laugh with his jokes, observations and stories. What a thrill to have Jerry himself in our little venue right in front of us. Officially, it was a secret that he was going to perform. I guess this, I guess this is so he didn't get unwanted press attention media attention. It's nice for a famous comedian to be able to do a show without people knowing about it in advance, as long as he's sure that the room will be full, which obviously it was going to be full for this. It's nice for a comedian like Jerry Seinfeld to be able to perform without everyone knowing in advance that he's going to be there. It means that the audience is pleasantly surprised. And also the comedian gets the element of surprise, which is always quite nice for a stand-up. And I guess he also wanted to have the freedom to say whatever he wanted and maybe try some new material possibly without all of it ending up in an article in a newspaper in New York or something like that, which does happen sometimes. So it was a secret that Jerry was on the show, but I think most of the people in the room had an inkling that he was coming. And so the place was filling up nicely, mostly with local stand-up comedians um, who were all keen to see one of their idols uh, two of their idols, in fact, because, of course, Gad El Malay was going to make an appearance too. Uh, while sitting on the bench, I managed to get my audio recorder out, kind of subtly, as if I was uh, like a secret agent or something. I felt a bit like James Bond, although I did it in a, in a much less elegant way um, compared to how James Bond would do that. You know the way James Bond is given these gadgets and then he is able to get the gadget out and use it 
very easily without looking uncool. It never breaks his um, his elegance. You know, it's just he'll casually sort of f- pull the pen out of his pocket, which is actually a gun. Whereas for me, <laughs> I'm so far from being James Bond because I had a audio recorder in my pocket and I was there like struggling, struggling to get the thing out, trying to pull it out of my pocket without bringing too much attention to myself. But it was stuck in my pocket and I couldn't get it out. And I had to like try and lean forwards and stretch my leg out, but I didn't have much room. And it's like, <coughs> and Amber was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm just, just, just trying to get this bloody thing out of my pocket you know, without standing up and pulling it out. So I'm far from James Bond. But anyway, I still I tried to kind of get the thing out secretly without everyone seeing that I was going to record the show. Um, and I managed to get it out. And then I recorded something with Amber before the show started. OK, so this is now a little clip where I just managed to talk to Amber and, and sort of had a few words with her. So this is the beautiful sound of Amber, uh, Amber's voice talking to me. Not just Amber's voice talking to me, but Amber talking to me with her voice uh, in the uh, Pan Am Art Cafe, which was slowly filling up with audience members keen to, to see uh, the mystery, mysterious guest on the stage. So I'm, uh, I'm here with Amber Minogue, the one and only. Hello, Amber. Uh, hello, Luke. So paint the picture. What's the situation? We're at the Pan Am Comedy Club downstairs. It's filling up. Um, for a moment, we thought it, no one was going to come. It was very quiet. And now it's just everyone's rushing in. Full of people speaking French very loudly, yep. as French people often do. And uh, most people in the room don't know who's going to be on stage tonight, correct? Uh, well, I don't know. I've got a suspicion that the French people might know. Uh, we, we've been keeping it very quiet. We've identified some entourage. Yeah, we identified, uh, yes, his entourage. Some glamorous looking people sitting on the side of the, the room there who must be part of the uh, special celebrity entourage. Very, they're giving up a VIP vibe, mm. certainly. And uh, at some moment soon, the show is going to begin. And then we're going to get uh, lots of our friends doing stand-up. Sebastian is on stage this evening. Sarah's going to be on stage this evening. And then we will get, uh, well, these special celebrity special guests. The double bill. The double bill of uh, an extremely famous French comedian, whose name I've already mentioned already on the way here. But I'm not going to mention it now in case everyone realises and then uh, of course uh, the top of the bill uh, the American the American one of the most famous uh, comedians in uh, in the world I would say right pretty much yeah pretty much yeah okay yeah. so there you go listeners we are ready and up for it so I'll try and record a little bit of Jerry's set what who Oh, sorry, Jerry. Uh, Jerry. Oh. Jer- <laughs> sorry, I keep saying the name. Ah! Stop it. Uh, I'll try and record a bit, listeners, and then maybe we'll get a sample. All right. Oh, very exciting. Maybe he's going to be rubbish. We don't know. Doubtful. It, well, when he did New York Comedy Night, yeah, he didn't do that well. To be fair, there were only about 15 people in the room. So how well can you do? But it, it, it wasn't... Yeah, but tonight gonna, he's going to smash it. He's going to crash it. Yeah, he's going to smash it, isn't he? He's going to destroy the... He's going to crash He's going to kill. He's going to kill the, everyone. He's all, so all that's, the comedy words. Yeah, all the, violent. Violent stand-up comedy words. To kill, to smash it, to bomb. He's not going to die. He's not going to die on stage, but he will kill us. He's going to kill the room. Anyway, that's enough <laughs> of that. Uh, bye for now, everybody. So, yes, there were some VIPs, some very important people in the room on the sofa at the side. Uh, There were a little group of sort of VIPs. This was Seinfeld and Gad's entourage, the people that were there with him, including Russian supermodel Natalia Vodianova, sitting just a few metres away from us. Natalia Vodianova, the, the Russian supermodel, I don't know if you know her, And yes, she was on time for the show, thankfully, and not in a hurry or anything, so that was fine. No one needed to say anything about how she was late or anything like that. But yes, you see, I brush shoulders with the stars, ladies and gentlemen, quite literally in the case of Seinfeld, who brushed against my shoulder as he walked past me and took to the stage the last time he was in Paris and visited one of our other shows. The reason Seinfeld was in town was because it was Fashion Week in Paris. It's always Fashion Week in Paris, as far as I can tell, as people do walk around the city like they're on a catwalk. But the main difference is that during 
actual fashion week, you, you see even more super fashionable people than normal, and you see some outfits which are a bit more outlandish and extravagant and high fashion than normal. So Jerry was there accompanying his wife. It was really his wife that was attending fashion week. Maybe she works in fashion. I'm not sure. Uh, but Jerry was there with her. And I think that they'd been attending some events and stuff as part of the fashion week. And I guess that's why Natalia Vodianova was there too. And and she, I, I can imagine that she was obviously very excited to be in the same room as Luke from Luke's English podcast. And she was doing a very good job of keeping cool, um, considering she was so close to, no doubt, one of her big heroes. Um, but she, she was, you know, she's a professional. She was able to keep calm, keep a very straight face. She didn't let on at all that she was starstruck. So, you know, that's, that's nice. And I respect her for that. Okay, so what happened next was that the room filled up to capacity meaning it filled up completely. Sarah then opened the show and did about 10 minutes and she smashed it. She didn't actually break anything. It's just an expression in stand-up, meaning that she did well. She made everyone laugh. And then Sebastian came up and did more and he smashed it too. Uh, again, he just made everyone laugh. They killed. Uh, they didn't bomb or die on stage. Again, more violent stand-up comedy terminology there. They did very well. I think they were slightly worried that the audience wouldn't care about them as they were, as the audience were really only there to see the main stars. But they did very well and they got the audience laughing consistently. Usually comedians don't just tell individual jokes, right? They actually blend their jokes into stories and comments and natural sounding speech. And Sarah and Sebastian both did this really well and I was very happy to see them making everyone laugh and really doing a great job and being very impressive. I wasn't on stage that evening, which was fine by me. I was just happy to be entertained. While Sebastian was on stage, Jerry and Gad hadn't actually arrived at this point. I think that everyone backstage was like, when are they going to arrive? What's going on? No one quite knew when they were going to arrive. So Sebastian was on stage trying to, trying to, he had to just keep going until he got the signal from backstage that Jerry was ready. And then Sebastian introduced Gad Elmaleh, who took to the stage. And of course, the audience went wild because they love him. And Gad spoke for about five minutes before introducing Jerry Seinfeld. And then Jerry walked up, looking very smart. Um, and then, wow, there was Jerry Seinfeld, the actual Jerry Seinfeld on our stage at the Pan Am, just there. Like you could have just reached out and touched him. Uh, although that wouldn't have been a good idea. That that would have been very weird, a weird, weird thing to do. Uh, so thankfully, nobody did that. But anyway, you could have. He, he was right there. So there he was right on stage um, on our little stage at the Pan Am. It feels like our stage for our entertainment. Now, I know that for a lot of you, Jerry Seinfeld is not a big deal. And in fact, you hardly know who he is. Or perhaps you've never heard of him. But he is a huge star. And you'll just have to take my word for it. When you see someone that you feel you know very well, or someone that you're extremely or someone that you're extremely familiar with, but only through the medium of TV or something, it's odd, it's strange. The human brain can't quite deal with it. You know, you kind of think, but wait a minute, you 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 only exist in that fantasy world of television, and now here you are in the material world. What's going on? There they are in 3D, in normal life, right in front of you. They look somehow smaller. It's very strange. So I, th I thought that Jerry might not do very well. I th I, for some reason, I thought that he wouldn't make everyone laugh as much as he could because the audience might not understand him or maybe he'd try new material that wouldn't work or maybe he's only truly funny in front of a New York audience or something. But no, he was great. It was fascinating to watch him sort of warm up and get his rhythm going and then break into his familiar attitudes and speech patterns and everything. One of the things that he does is speak in a fairly dramatic way about quite mundane things. Like, for example, talking about brands of food that you find in the supermarket or how he talks to his kids. His voice goes up to a, a higher pitch 
And the whole attitude makes his observations very funny. I'm not going to try and dissect the frog here. You just sort of have to be there, really. Or at least see some videos of Seinfeld, and I'll post some videos on the page for this episode. Although, watching videos of him performing doesn't really do it justice either. Just being in the room is 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 a totally different thing. So... Jerry talked about his marriage and about family life. And also he did some really funny stuff about food and supermarket products. And this is what Seinfeld does. He talks about seemingly banal, unimportant, trivial subjects, but finds ways to make them funny and finds interesting observations about them that make everyone laugh. And we all had a fantastic time. And at the end of his 20 minute set, he asked us if we had any questions So he'd done his comedy and he said, "Okay, does anyone have any questions? And of course, I jumped at the chance and asked him something. And listeners, I was recording at the time. That's right. I had my audio recorder running. I was recording at the time. And I'll play some of that to you now. I'll play some of that recording for you. So what you're going to hear now is a clip of Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, I think you're going to hear a bit of his comedy. Okay, this is a bit of him speaking right at the start of his performance. A few sentences about how strange it is for him to be performing in Paris to French people in English. And so I'll play you that. I can't publish the main part of his performance, but I'll, I'll publish some of the bits that he said, some of the bits of his material, but it's only a little bit really, and I'm going to skip out most of it because obviously I can't just publish all of that. But then I will play you the very brief bit at the end where I asked him a question, okay? Uh, and, um, and by the way, he did say it was okay to record him. He did say that. Someone had their phone and they were videoing him and he said, that's okay, I don't mind if you record. So there you go. After his bit, uh, he asked if anyone had any questions and I leapt at the opportunity and and I asked him a question. So what about my question? Well, I wanted to ask him something very easy and I didn't want to make a fool of myself or ramble at all, which could have easily happened. I could have asked him something like this, you know, could have said, "Um, yeah, can I interview you for my podcast? I could have done that, but I expect he would have said no. I mean, that could have been quite funny. He could have just gone, no. Like that that would have been quite funny. Um, but I just felt it wasn't the right moment to just throw that question at him. Anyway, I'll let you hear what I asked him and what happened. And you can hear that all happening right now. So here we go. Mr. Jerry Seinfeld. makes no sense. It's not necessary. I'm not moving here. I'm not changing. I'm doing just fine in America speaking English. I don't need to do this, but God thought it was a good idea. So I wanted to see, I heard about that you have English night. I don't know why you do this either. So again, it's not your language, you don't need to speak it, but, and the comedians, so that you have French comedians that speak English, come up here talking to French people who also speak English. It's like a puzzle in the, in the newspaper that you don't need to do it, just because they put it in the newspaper, you don't need to fill out the whole crossword puzzle. But uh, I wanted to see, but I see that you uh, you understand me. It's very nice. It's a very nice feeling, right? To reach across and to connect. We went to uh, another comedy club the other uh, the other night, and they, they had my picture up there. I couldn't believe anybody even knew who I was. So it was very exciting. So uh, I am here. My wife is here. This is my wife. Yeah, that was why. Here for Fashion Week. <laughs> Jessica and I have been married for 22 years. 
all marriage year numbers get applause. <laughs> we don't know what these people are doing. We don't know if they like each other. But we know what 22 years is. And we applaud for that. 22 years, yes. It's like when there's a marathon and the people come by. Everybody applauds. I don't know why they're doing this. So when I see an old married couple, sometimes I just hand them a cup of water. And they go, oh, hang in there. My lad, you know, keep going. We get applause at the end. I love being married. Uh, I am, and so 22 years I feel I'm advanced. I was a beginner. Then 20, you're intermediate. And now I am advanced. And um, <laughs> I'm sure there are people, um, if, or if you're married, um, want to know, or you're thinking about getting married, so how, what is the secret of marriage? Or the secret of marriage, obviously, is to make the other person happy. That's what I tell all my guy friends, make your woman happy, you, you're not going to be happy, so don't even worry about it. <laughs> that's good, because that cuts your work in half. <laughs> now we're down to one person we gotta keep to goddamn good. men don't want to be happy men we don't know what it is we've never experienced it we couldn't be less interested in it a man wants the same thing from his underwear that he wants from the woman in his life a little bit of support a little bit of freedom <laughs> So, <laughs> questions. What do you want to know from me, about me, anything, any subject? Do you speak French? Do I speak French? No. <laughs> no, I don't. Merci, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. That's it. I would like to speak French, um, but, uh, you know. For this? <laughs> one show that I'm gonna... Now, where are you from, sir? Me? Yes. England. England. And you speak French. I'm not gonna say yes in front of all the French no, people. No. So there you go, listeners. I asked Jerry if he spoke French, and he just said a flat no which was no surprise. And I thought that he might say a few things about that, you know, about, I thought he might come up with some hilarious observations about the French language. I thought it might be a, a platform for him to try out some comedy about French and the English language and the human condition or something, but no. And surprisingly, he asked me, he started asking me questions. He asked me where I was from and if I spoke French. And as you heard, I was unable to reply with anything witty or clever in that moment. And that was that. But I did have a sort of conversation with Jerry Seinfeld, didn't I? I did, didn't I? Let's just run through the specifics of that interview. And yes, I'm calling it an interview again. OK, so here is how it went again. So Jerry said, does anyone have any questions? And I said, should I, I should try and do it in his voice. Does anyone have any questions? I'm not going to do it in his voice because it sounds more like Christopher Walken when I do it. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Do you speak French? Uh, no. Un peu. And then I think some people laughed. And then he said, where are you from, sir? And I said, I'm from England. And he said, do you speak French? And I went, like that. And then I said, I'm not going to say yes in front of all these French people. And that was it. OK, I think he might have he might have said you're in the wrong country or something, but maybe that was just my subconscious saying that to me in a crowd of people. I don't know. Perhaps the white noise of the of the crowd it, in the in all that noise, I somehow interpreted this message coming through. <laughs> you're in the wrong country. I don't know. Actually, I don't think I am in the wrong country because, you know, my wife and daughter are here, so that's where I belong to. So Jerry said some very funny things about marriage, including the fact that he never knows what's going on. This is just some of the things that he said in his set. He said his wife knows everything, like what they're doing and what they're going to do. But because Jerry has been married for 20 years, he's at an, he's at an advanced level in terms of marriage. And so he's learned special things, including the fact that he just he doesn't bother his wife. 
It's just better if he just leaves her alone. He never bothers her with questions about what they're doing. He just finds out what they're doing when they're doing it, okay? But when his wife is on the phone to someone, that's when he pays attention because that's when she describes everything about her life in great detail, no matter who she's on the phone to. And he waits for those moments and listens very carefully to her in order to find out what is actually going on in his life. Obviously, it's much better when it comes from the actual voice of Jerry Seinfeld. But one of my favourite jokes from that bit in his set was, was this. He said, A man wants the same thing from his underwear as he wants from the woman in his life. A man wants the same thing from his underwear as he wants from the woman in his life. A little bit of support and a little bit of freedom. Now, I didn't get the chance to talk to Jerry after the show because as soon as he got off stage, that was it. He was gone with his entourage. They slipped away quickly and discreetly into the night, no doubt to eat at a top restaurant or go back to their lovely hotel somewhere. And the rest of us were left out in the street outside the Pan Am to chat and have fun. Now, I'm afraid I didn't get any recordings with uh, my friends afterwards. Uh, just because there wasn't really a good moment and it was all very busy and some people were getting food inside and other people were leaving and other people were standing around and and just I didn't want to interrupt the conversation and pull out a microphone. So I'm afraid Jerry Seinfeld is just going to have to be enough in terms of conversation partners or guests for this episode. But I did attach my hands-free lapel mic again at the end of the evening in order to ramble a bit more while riding my bike on the way back home through the Paris streets. So I will now let you listen to that. Right, so I'm now outside the show. The show's finished. I hung around with friends, but I didn't get the recording equipment out. It's 11 o'clock here in the street as I get my stuff back together and get on the bike and get the hell out of here and go home. So I did hang out with uh, some people after the show and stuff, but I didn't get my microphone out and the rest of it to capture that magical moment. But anyway, there you go. So this is now the post-show end of the podcast journey home. As I attempt to negotiate the streets of Paris by bicycle one more time. Taking every precaution into the cycle lane. It's the, it's the best way to travel around the city, find the cycle lanes. It can be tricky. In Paris, sometimes you get cycle lanes. <coughs> and you could be happily cycling along. But suddenly the cycle lane disappears. Ah! And you have to merge with traffic. Or find some other route through the crowds of people and uh, crazy drivers. Right, so I'm now going to make the return journey home in exactly the same, exactly the same route, but in reverse, see if I can remember it. But there you go, listeners. I think I managed to, to capture the moment when Jerry was on the stage. And at the end of his set, he asked if anyone had any questions. Did you hear that bit? I think I've probably played it to you, unless I play it all at the end. But there it was, basically. He asked if anyone had any questions. I was recording at the time, and I asked him a question. I even had a little exchange with him. He asked me where I was from and things like that, and asked me if I spoke French. (laughs) Um, Oh, dear, there's a big, big truck behind me. A a bus. That's it. Anyway, so I did have a little conversation. I asked him a question. He was being recorded. It was on my podcast. I have now interviewed Jerry Seinfeld on my podcast. The only problem is that he didn't realise he was on the podcast at the time. I don't know if that actually counts. Does it? Does it count that I've actually secretly recorded him and now I'm going to publish that part of the the, uh, recording? I think it's fine. He did actually say during the performance... He actually made a point of saying that he doesn't really mind when people film him. Maybe it was just because he was in Paris, but he actually said that it was fine. So there you go. He said it himself. 
Um, but there you go. So I've actually had Jerry Seinfeld on this podcast. And I've ever had a conversation with Seinfeld on my podcast. Listeners, this is some sort of my major milestone. Um, I don't know if I can actually go around saying, yeah, I had Jerry Seinfeld on. I don't think I'm, uh, I can actually go that far. But nevertheless, there it is. It happened. And what a great feeling. I mean, Seinfeld is... Uh, I mean, he's a legend. His sitcom, his TV show, which was called Seinfeld, also written by Larry David, is just one of those all-time great uh, TV sitcoms, uh, situation comedies, sort of genre-defining 90s comedy TV show that's just been repeated and repeated on numerous different channels around the world, sort of like Friends. It was It was the big sitcom before Friends came along and completely dominated the whole genre but before that it was Seinfeld and then as a stand-up comedian as well he is just legendary and it's he doesn't use any rude language he doesn't swear at all all of his comedy is all about observating uh, observating what happened all about observing different funny things in everyday life and he just captures very specific things. I mean, you know, the thing that is the, the voice that he's got, which when I do it sounds more like Christopher Walken. Wow. Uh, but he's got a very um, unique sounding voice and a really funny way of picking apart and noticing everyday things in a very clever and funny way. So I'm actually going to focus on cycling and probably... This is all probably being invaded by the sounds of wind in the microphone. So I'm just going to leisurely ride home. If I get a street light, I'll stop and have a little chat. OK. Well, I'm nearly home and uh, that has been a very, very nice cycle ride indeed. As I said before, my favourite time to be, one of my favourite times to be in Paris at night especially at around this time which is getting close to midnight and a lot of people have had their dinner a lot of people have gone to bed streets are pretty quiet it's actually it's about 25 past 11 so there's still some people out and about having drinks finishing their dinner and stuff but the streets are much quieter, despite what you can hear. There's always like police knocking around and whatever. Here they come. That's the pompier. The pompier, that's the fire fighters, fire service. But they also do ambulance stuff, which I've never quite understood. But in Paris, you've, in France, you've got the three emergency services like you do at home. There's, there's police, there's ambulance, and there's firefighters. And, uh, but the, ambu- the firefighters do the ambulance stuff as well, uh, which I've never really understood. But there you go. So basically, if you have an emergency, you can, you know, what people say is you can call the ambulance, but actually, if you want it to be done properly, you call the pompier for some reason. Um, I don't know. So, uh, a lovely ride home, and I'm now going to struggle to get my bike through the door uh, to my uh, building, and then that'll be the end of the podcast, listeners. But uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this nighttime special, this evening time into nighttime spe- celebrity special of Luke's English Podcast with the one and only Jerry Seinfeld. Um, You might be disappointed at the lack of Amber and Sarah in the episode, but uh, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. But still, pretty glad with the Jerry Seinfeld thing. So, we'll see how the episode turns out. I'm going to review this later. And who knows, maybe... um Maybe it's, it's going to sound absolutely terrible and I won't be able to use it. But anyway, we'll see. Thank you, though, listeners, for listening to this special outdoor evening walk and talk, ride and talk, ride and ride and walk, uh, cycle and talk episode of Luke's English Podcast. I'm speaking quietly because uh, my neighbours are upstairs. 
they might have their windows open. I don't want to. I wouldn't want to disturb them. So anyway, thank you to you for listening, and I will speak to you again soon. But for now, goodbye. Bye. 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 So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to this episode of Luke's English Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it. From time to time, I will do more of these episodes in the street, as they are quite fun. And since the wind while cycling wasn't a problem, which I've now realised after reviewing the recording, the the wind noise wasn't an issue, was it? So maybe I could do more bike-based rambles, but I will see. It could also be fun to do a sort of commentary episode, perhaps where I sit at a cafe or something and just comment on what's going on in the street. That could be good. Who knows what would happen? Maybe an argument between drivers? Maybe lovers meeting for a romantic tryst? Maybe a dog curling out a poo on the pavement? All possible on the streets of the City of Light. Uh, By the way, I did find out about the nickname, the City of Light, Apparently Paris got that title because it was the first European city to get gas lamps in a lot of the main streets. So during the evenings, the streets were lit up with these gas lamps. And that was long before other cities did the same thing. So that's why Paris was known as the City of Light or City of Lights because of all the gas lamps they had in the street. These days, it's more like the City of Traffic Lights headlights and brake lights, but still, it is very pretty. By the way, if you want other episodes like this, for example, episodes where I've recorded them outside and you like the atmosphere of those episodes, uh, here are some others that you could check out just in case you don't have enough stuff to listen to. Um, So episodes 205 and 206 are called Summer in London. And in those ones, I took a walk through parts of central London while recording an episode. 205 and 206, Summer in London. I walked through some very nice parts of the city, including places like St. James's Park, Buckingham Palace and other uh, spots. Uh, Episode 139 is called Hard Driving, in which I recorded an episode while driving a mini through the streets of Paris. It was quite a stressful episode, as you can imagine, but that's 139. Hard driving, like this one, but with a car and um, a bit more stress. Episode 410 was called Teaching 12 Idioms in the Street, and in that one, Amber and I visited the set of Paul Taylor's TV show in a rather posh part of Paris. Paul was recording in the street, and Amber and I joined him. And together, Amber and I recorded a podcast about idioms in the street. So teaching 12 idioms in the street, episode 410. Episode number 759, as we continue with this random list, is called Life is What Happens When You're Busy Making Other Plans. That was recorded recently while walking around the streets in my local area of Paris, doing a bit of laundry at the Laundrette. You might remember that one. And if you like episodes involving cycling, then you should uh, check out uh, episodes 136 and 196. They both include all the vocabulary that you might need to talk about bikes and cycling. Episode 136 is called Cycling from London to Paris. And episode 196 is called Cycling from Coast to Coast. And in both of those, I spoke to Ben Fisher about two long cycling adventures which he did a few years ago, including some exciting details about what happened on his cycling missions and some vocabulary explanations too. That's it. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, Do leave your comments in the comments section, as usual, and I will speak to you again soon. New episodes are coming with various things in the pipeline, which I will let you discover as and when they arrive. The next episode should be about reading and there's going to be a premium series that goes with it as well okay so that's something you can look forward to next time i think the title of the next episode will be something like this the surprising power of reading aloud and uh, it's full of interesting insights about the importance and value of reading out loud and it's backed up by bits of scientific Uh, research and stuff like that. So an interesting one about reading. I don't often do episodes about reading. I I do episodes in which I do some reading stories and stuff, and I've got more of those coming too. But anyway, the next one is all about reading. So you can maybe just think about 
What's the difference between reading silently, which is what most people do, and reading out loud? What do you think could be the benefits of reading out loud? And there are a few of them, apparently. That's just something for you to think about. Until next time. But thank you so much for listening. I will speak to you again soon. But for now, it's time to say goodbye. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk.